Hello, my name is Teresa Walker, and I'm a staff member at Potomac Library, uh, which I'm a library technician. Uh, today, I'm going to uh, present a program about sewing and how to get familiar with your sewing machine, and also do a little project that will illustrate how to make a pin cushion to help you with your sewing endeavors. So this is where we get started. Uh, here's my sew machine. It looks like it's a Singer heavy duty sew machine. Um, a lot of things are alike on different machines. This just happens to be heavy duty because it sews heavier fabrics. Um, first thing we need to do is get it all plugged up. Here's the pressure foot that makes the um, uh, sew machine run. And this is the cord, which also we needs to plug into the wall and also plug into the side of the machine right here. You see, there's only one way that it's going to go into the machine. Uh, and it's right over here. And if it doesn't go in smoothly, turn it over and try that way. Never force it. Uh, there you go. And push it all the way in until it stops. Don't force it too far. Take your pressure foot and put it on the floor. And we, we've got the power going to our machines. This is the light that turns on the power right here. Turn it on or off. So we're going to turn it on right now. And we're going to look at the machine. This is our stitch guide here. This is our length guide of the stitches. This right here is the width guide of the stitches. Um, this right here is our tension knobs. Um, I'll get to that in a few minutes. Right here is where you put your spool. Let me take it off and show you the spool and the little clip that goes on it. Uh, you put the spool right here. Make sure the clip goes on next and push it until the spool is secure. That little clip, clip is important because it helps make sure the spool doesn't come off the thread. And here's our uh, thread coming off of the machine. This clip right here and this knob right here helps us to thread the bobbin. So let's put it under this clip and around this clip. Let's go down here to where the bobbin is, is uh, in the machine. Let's open it up with this little uh, black sliding uh, gadget right here and just pull the bobbin out. You see my bobbin is completely empty. So I'm going to show you how to wind the bobbin. These little holes are here on purpose. Uh, you put your, yarn, your string into the hole. Well, it's a little tricky to get in, in the hole there. Uh, and then you pull it up just a little bit so you can grab onto it. Uh, so then you place it on this spindle right here, push it down until it clicks, and then push it over until it clicks again. Uh, hold the end of the thread and hold, get this lined up here in the groove. And I'll tell you why you start holding this thread. See how, hold both threads and it starts winding. And then when you wind it just a little bit, you can get your scissors and clip that little string off. Uh, so you, you wind it the rest of the way. You kind of have to guide it a little bit because it doesn't always go up and down. You sort of guide it to make sure it's even because we don't want an uneven bobbin because that causes problems. So I'm just going to wind it halfway to show you how, see that looks pretty even. There's uh, an even line, not all this yarn string goes up here and it's kind of even spaced. Uh, this machine also on this side of the machine, there's a little blade that cuts off the thread for you. So let's get the bobbin position first. You set the bobbin in here, and there's little grooves that help you guide the bobbin in the machine. So make sure you get it under that 
and pull it back, okay? If you have trouble seeing the grooves, that's why I brought out this little manual. This manual shows you the different um, places, how you can thread your machine and how you do your bobbins. So refer to your book. Don't be afraid to refer to your book. That's what it's there for. So I've got my bobbin situated. And now the next thing I have to do is thread my machine. So I take it off of this bobbin loop and still keep it in this little clip right there. So if you look in your manual, it's simple as a one, two, three, four, five. Some machines have the numbers on it and this one does. So this one right here, this clip here is number one. And this clip right here is number two. So you push it in underneath that until it's secure. Then number three is right here. So go down to the slit right here. And there's number four. Number four, you have to turn it upwards and then get it to go in there. And this is number five. This little thing here is number five. And it has to go in that and down again. And number six is this little clip right here and it goes through there and number seven would be this final little clip here now we're ready to test the fabric uh, i've got out two squares of fabric as you can see uh there's a right side which is brighter in color and then there's a wrong side which is sort of lighter in color so uh here's my second square the brightness is on this side and the light color is the back side of it. So uh, in most projects, um, you put the two right sides, bright, which are bright, put those together. I'm going to sew this seam right here. So to keep it um, where I want it to do, I'm going to put a couple of about three pins. I'm going to put one not right at the beginning, but maybe an inch or so from the beginning. And I'm going to put one at the end. So right in here, I'm going to put one at the end. And then make sure your edges are still together. And then I'm going to put one right here in the middle to keep it secure. Now I'm going to take it to my sew machine here. Raise up the pressure foot if it's not already raised, and then get your fabric lined up under and push the rate, the pressure foot down. I'm going to sew maybe three stitches, and then this lever right here is a reverse stitch. So I want to use that to reverse a couple stitches because it helps lock the end so, so it's more secure. So I'm pressing that down. So I'm going to go back two stitches, release it, and then I'm going to take this pin out and sew the rest of the way. As you notice on this side, I've got a little edge over here. I put it on five eighths of an inch because most patterns do have a five eighths seam allowance if you look at the patterns. So I'm going to keep that guided. Notice how my fingers are away from the needle area and to the side and to the front. I'm never right up on there uh, because you know you don't want your fingers to get caught in the in the needle so keep it on the side here and just a little bit to the front continue to sew take this away and then we're at the end and I'm going to do the same thing that I did at the beginning do a reverse stitch for a couple stitches and then release and then finish the rest of, rest of the way See how I'm letting it sew a little bit? I want at least four inches of thread to come off of the machine. See there's, and then I want to cut it right there. The reason we want to tail, you pull it a little bit further after you push up the pressure. The reason we want to tail is because if it's cut too short, every time you start the machine again, the needle will come unthreaded. So we do want to keep threading our machine. So this is my stitch. It looks like it's pretty balanced. It looks the same on the front side as it does on the back side. And that's why this tension knob right here is so important. 
uh, if it was off, you would see little bit loops here. Uh, that means it's not tension. And if you ever move this, um, only move it slightly until you get it balanced. See, you can see from opening the fabric that the stitches are pretty, pretty secure and balanced there. So uh, we've got our first seam done. Let's do a second seam, but this time I want to make it a fourth of an inch seam. That's the reason why I want to do a fourth of the seam is that's what our project is going to have fourth of an inch seams. But you can always make it wider if you wanted to when I get to the project. It doesn't have to be a fourth of an inch, but I chose a fourth of an inch. But make it a half an inch if, if that feels better for you. Uh, so I'm putting one at the beginning, one at the end, and one in the middle here. So to judge the fourth of a seam, you see the pressure foot here? I just want to put the fabric right next to it so that there's no excess like I did on before. So I'm taking that first needle out, sewing a couple stitches, reversing it, going back a couple stitches and continue with sewing. And I keep that always lined up with the pressure foot. Take the needle out and keep sewing. The reason the sew machine does its sort of guides itself is because of the feed dogs underneath the machine. So you don't have to worry about moving the fabric. The machine helps you do that. At the end, I want to double stitch a little bit and pull it about out about four inches. Raise my pressure foot to get a little bit more and then clip it there. So as you can see, if you can, uh, the seam is narrow on the second seam that I did versus wider on the second seam. And if you open it up, like I'm going to open it up and you can turn it right side out. See, both sides are secure. And that's what I want to have both sides secure. So um, we're finished with this section of getting to know your machine. The only other thing I wanted to to tell you about is this uh, knob right here. This is the needle position. Right now I have it in the center, but if you wanted to make it to one side, you can move it to the right side or you can move it back to the left side. But most uh, projects, you wanna keep it in the center. Uh, so that's what I suggest to keep your needle position in the center. Uh, so that's why the guides are uh, more accurate when it's in the center. Now it's ready to get started on our wrist pin cushion. This is what the little kit's going to look like. You can pick it up at Potomac Library in Woodbridge, or you can pick it up at Central in Manassas. Mm -hmm. The thing you need to make a, a wrist pin cushion, just like mine, is going to be in this kit. It's in a little baggie. It's got cotton inside. It's got a little piece of fabric inside. It's got a little bit of elastic. And more, most important, it's got some instructions inside. Uh, and it gives a step-by-step -step guide to all the things that I'm going to demonstrate uh, to help you get started. It has little diagrams to help you know what to do to, to do and where to place the fabric and things like that. First thing it says is take out your fabric and which I've taken out my fabric and it said press it with an iron to get all the wrinkles out. So I did that ahead of time. So I pressed all the wrinkles out. And then it says fold the fabric in half with right sides together. That's what why it was important to know uh, the bright side is the right side, the dull looking side or the lighter side is the wrong side. So we're folding the right sides together, matching at the long edges. Uh, so now you have a fabric that looks like a two and a half inch wide fabric and uh, a long piece in the folds up here at the top. I press the fabric with an iron too to get a little crease 
you can see the crease right here. So that's why I put that as a guide. So what I'm going to do after I put the crease in, I'm going to unfold the fabric and take the elastic out of my baggie and I'm going to take it to the sew machine now. Uh, we're going to position the fabric here at the bottom edge. If you see right here, it's the bottom edge uh, close to the corner, but not at the corner. So maybe half an inch from the corner. We're going to sew that in place. We're just sewing the elastic on the right side of the fabric also. So I got it, my needle positioned and I put down to my pressure foot and I'm going to keep my hands away from the needle. I'm going to keep it to the side. So I'm going to let my machine and my feed dogs, which are right under here, to do the work for me, to move my fabric and my elastic along. So you line up your needle sort of right at the elastic, okay? Uh, so about a couple stitches. Remember that my reverse thing, I reverse it here and I sew it backwards a little bit and then I go forward again. And that helps secure the elastic. Press it again at the end of the fabric and go all the way to the end of the elastic. And sometimes um, to make it more secure, I'm going to just go from the back to the front again. So it's sort of like a double stitch in the fabric. And then I'm going all, all the way to the end of the fabric. I'm going to leave my little tail, stop the machine, raise it up, and cut my uh, thread right here at the end. I'm going to take the elastic to the opposite side, put it about a half an inch from the edge there. And I'm going to put the edge. <coughs> see if you stretch out the fabric, you'll see it. It's about fourth of an inch all the way down. So just let the elastic loose. Line up your needle close to the fabric there. Do a couple stitches, reverse it, sew to the end. We're going to reverse it again and go all the way back to the end. And we're going to du double stitch it again. And then I'm going to take it out of the machine. And if you don't have enough, you use this wheel to help guide the machine. I'm going to clip the threads here at the end. And I'm also going to clip the other tail here. See, keep it kind of neat. Clip, take your time and clip the tails off. So here's what it looks like so far. You see the elastic's only five inches long. So uh, there's a little, if you stretch it, it still gives a little slack in the fabric. But when it's stretched out, it'll look like that. Okay, so we're going to take it, you see the fold I made? I'm going to fold it right there on the, that seam again. And see how this other side of the fabric is going to be kind of wonky looking, I guess. Uh, but it's not going to match up on this side. But don't worry about that. Just worry about matching it up on the side that you're going to sew with. So I'm going to start here in the middle. Uh, about, about an inch from from the long edge there, and I'm going to put a pin right there. That's where we're going to start sewing. Then I'm going to put a pin right there at the at the uh, corner, and then I'm going to put another one oh, about right here to keep all the edges lined up of where we're going to sew. So I'm going to sew from this side. I'm going to start here at this first pin. And like I said, uh, I'm going to do a fourth of an inch. So make sure that elastic is away from where you're going to sew because we don't want to catch that elastic in that seam that's going to be right there. So I'm going to put it right there by that first needle. I'm going to take the first needle out, the pin or needle. And I'm going to sew a couple stitches, reverse it. I'm going to sew 
to the corner. Well, not all the way to the corner, but we're going to stop right there about a quarter of an inch away. We're going to use our hand wheel here, and we're going to make the needle go into the fabric. We're going to raise our pressure foot, turn it 90 degrees, take that needle out because we don't need it because we've got it all lined up. We're going to put the pressure foot down. And then I'm going to sew the rest of the way to the corner. And then we'll stop a couple of stitches before the corner, reverse it, and then sew all the way off in the fabric. Get a tail, and then I'm going to clip that right there. And you can clip the tail here at the beginning also. Okay, so we've got that clipped. Oh, whoops, one more. One more clip here. And then the other side, you see the elastic is bunching up right here. But don't worry about it. Just get the bunch, go to the other side now. Get it lined up here at the corner. Push the elastic a little bit down so you won't sew over it. Put your needle about an inch from the corner. Put another one right there by the corner and then we're going to put one about in the middle here so we're going to start on this first needle here like i said don't worry about the elastic just get the bunch in so you get the bunch of because the elastic pushed toward the end so you can start right here and it see it's it's still even right there so that you can sew it so we put it on the machine right there by the first set, uh, pin. Take my pin out. Do a couple stitches. Reverse. Take that pin out. So almost to the corner, about a quarter of an inch from the corner. Guide your needle down into the fabric. Rotate 90 degrees with your pressure foot up. That's what my hand's doing back there, pulling the pressure foot up. Push, after you rotate it 90 degrees, put the pressure foot down and then continue sewing. So you're almost at the end there. Back stitch a couple of times and then go forward. About four inch tail clip and then clip the other side to keep all the strings at bay there. So there's our finish. We've, we're finished sewing it. See how the elastic is kind of bunching up in the middle? That's okay. The next step is to clip the corners. You clip the corners really close to the seam, but not through the seam. Being careful not to cut. You do it on all four corners. And now we're ready to turn it. See this uh, opening right here, that's what we um, didn't sew so that we could turn it. So just start with your fingers and pushing it in and push it in on the other side. And you can use this elastic to help pull it out too. So push the corners out as much as you can with your fingers or your thumb. And now it's ready to stuff. And here's your little baggie of cotton. Uh, you start by taking little balls of cotton. We don't want to push too much in at the same time. About the size of a cotton ball. Push it into this corner. Take another little cotton ball. Push it in that side. And we just keep doing like this until it's completely stuffed. And push some on the other side. And you may think it's stuffed now, but look how soft it is. It's soft like a pillow. What we want to do is uh, get it very stiff so that when you put it on your wrist, when you put your needles in, it won't stick your wrist. So 
you kind of overstuff it. So it, it usually you stuff in as much as you need to make sure it's good and stiff. So we've got it all um, stuffed and now it's time to get our needle and start sewing. Uh, just like I illustrated the ladder stitch, you, you go on this side with the one little stitch on this side and then pull it tight, a little stitch on the opposite side and pull it tight. Take your finger as you go, stuff that cotton in. A little stitch on this side and a stitch on the opposite side. Stitch on the other side. And another stitch there. Pull it tight. If that cotton, cotton tries to come out, just push it in with your finger there. Stitch on the opposite side. And pick another stitch on that side. The opposite side. We're almost there. And stitch on this side. Stitch on the opposite side. And stitch on that side. The opposite side and we're at the end. But what I like to do is I like to sew it twice to make sure it's secure. So I just go back and do the same thing over again. Going in the opposite direction of the I've already sewed. It'd be a little bit quicker this time because I'm not having to worry about the cotton coming out. And when you get to the end, we want to make a little knot. So go in sort of across the uh, fabric here, make a little loop and thread the needle through the loop there and pull the strings taut. Or you can also leave the fabric in and loop it around the needle like that, whichever you feel most comfortable with. But we want to make sure it stays secure there and wrap it around the needle and pull it that way. So there, there's our knot right there. And I don't want to cut, I don't want to cut it right there on the knot. What I want to do first is take my needle and come out of it about a half an inch away from the knot. See how it's coming out away from the knot? Yeah, right there's the needle and it's, it's away from the knot. So I want to pull it there and then I'm going to clip the thread right there. So that will prevent it from coming unknotted and makes it more secure. And pull the elastic back outside, put it on the wrist and say, "Lo, look what I've done. And now we can put our little pins in here. And see, it's, it's unless you push it all the way in, it's not touching your wrist. And uh, I want to thank you for uh, watching this video and also be sure to either stop by Potomac or Central Library in Manassas, Potomac is in Woodbridge, to pick up a kit and the kit will contain everything that you need, the cotton and the fabric and the instructions to make a pincushion just like mine. Thank you very much.